kind of got priority. Why didn't you get priority? Can't afford it. <laughs> we made it to Birmingham. Wheelberries are back in action now. Yeah, because you keep back in the <laughs> that stupid Jeff. Suitcase like children want their stuff. Stop the cursing. Sean's good with the peeping. Beep beep beep. So yeah, yeah. we're at the NEC. We have a few happening? people, a few people to meet. Uh, see what they're on the place. What kind of? This is always a good event because it's January and you just kind of run into everyone, have a conversation, literally talk <laughs> for the days, really. Yeah. With good friends and then sounds obviously. Like, sounds like a meet. absolute dream for Connor. It is. I talk actually. Couple of days. I'm actually <laughs> unbelievable to talk. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll go meet up a few people. Uh, we've got a couple of sponsors that are here. Have a few. Chats face to face and go that oh, see, what, <laughs> see what kind of uh, <laughs> no beeps, but uh, yeah, we will um, try to show oh, yeah, you some ABC of the content. Autosport is always a very good show because it is uh, one a cool show to go to, and also it's cool for us because we've been going here with mom and dad since we've literally been like, yeah, it was tradition there for tradition. probably eight or nine years. So now to be coming here for our work in 2018, I've done the live arena show here. It's quite cool because we used to do this with family and now it's obviously mine and Jack's job that we get to come and meet the companies that work with us. So it'll yeah. be a fun couple of days and uh, I don't really know if you're going to see anything but I'm sure you'll see some clips Yeah, and we'll enjoy it. The only thing I like about all sport is that there's usually new stuff that's like been, like you know, that we haven't seen, like you yeah. might have seen it online and you get to actually go and early see it and feel it and stuff. So, But, but yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens, go. we'll show you what's going on and hopefully there's a bit of content to get from this. Beep, 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 beep. Dragon. Right and drive too. Uh -huh. Nice machine. Would you like the cream interior? Yeah. Yeah? But I guess you're clean. This is like one of my dream road cars. Yeah, if it was me, it would be. I need the full black interior. I don't, I don't think you can come with full black. I think you can. Yeah. You can do full customization on most of the interior, I think. Yeah, I had one thanks to the Rebel Drift Brothers when I was in Germany this year, in the middle of the year, I think. Uh, I had one, I got taken back to the airport and stuff. Oh, what a car. Like, everyone's like, oh, you wouldn't go with the Touring if you had to buy one. Well, I for sure would go with the Touring. It's like my favorite model of them, I think. Yeah. That now and a Porsche GT3 RS in the shade that when I'm about 40 would be the dream. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice. At least he's dreaming big, I guess. Have you ever thought about hosting your own event like LZ Fest? Uh, we have spoke about this before, um, but I think if we were to do it, it probably wouldn't be anything like a competition for just like have a bit of crack. Yeah. Probably like have the pro cars there just to do a couple of laps because they're very expensive to drive, and then have like my all my twin cams <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my E46 and stuff, and then Connor could bring his fleet of practice cars and just have them on display because. <laughs> they don't, they don't fucking drive. <laughs> but uh No, definitely have thought about doing an event like that, like with just just getting together with people who support us really. Um and yeah, if you guys have interest in us doing a, a Shanahan event, make sure to say it in the comments and I'm sure we can work something out maybe this year and do an event not as to the scale of L Z Fest obviously, yeah. 
um, but more of like a VIP thing that you know close fans can come and, and meet us and basically spend the day with us so yeah there is some options for sure right next one what was Connor's rare tyre pressure in Poland's final battle with Laurie Heinen private information do you even know for sure what? <laughs> I do know because I said it myself actually <laughs> Uh, 14 PSI was the tire pressure. How did you both get into drifting? Uh, there's a really indeed <laughs> way to answer this and there's a, a quick way. Uh, for, I'll start because obviously I got into drifting before Connor. Um, so obviously rallying, racing, autographs has always been in the blood. Um, we started doing that when we were like 9, 10 years of age and it all kind of lived from there then. And obviously sliding a car was always like one of the most fun things we could do um and then i think obviously with having uh the deans literally over the road and like the mcnamara's and everything um it was kind of distant <laughs> to go sideways eventually um and that's kind of why i got into it was basically uh mike dean used to come here to change his tires and he brought over his ps13 one night and done a couple of rings in the yard and took me for a spin down the road and i'd say that's probably the night that i was hooked and then when I started that's gonna yeah for me it was a little bit different <clears throat> because I was very like focused on racing when I was a kid like that's what I used to really kind of enjoy doing was like circuit racing and all that kind of stuff and I was kind of a little bit away for the birds one night when you started drifting I was not really Connor thought he was gonna be like a football player <laughs> yeah like I was kind of just like kid that didn't know what I was doing um and I was playing lots of soccer and stuff at the time just as normal kids do. And then I think for me, it was kind of your first European event. I think I always kind of mm. used that story. I just went to watch it. And like, even when Jack was driving, of course, I was supportive and was a fan of what he was doing, but it never really clicked like that. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And then we went to Drift All Stars, your first ever European event. You were mm. like 13 at the time. Yeah. And yeah, I remember James was there spotting for him and I went to the stand watching the event with James and uh, I literally w watched the event from like first battle of top for the two the whole way to the final and like I remember I was a little kid then and I was walking out of that place being like this is pretty cool like this is what I wanted to kind of do and then I was supportive to Jack obviously following him around the world when he was driving before I ever started driving in drifting and then yeah Jack and dad built me a car snowball from there and now here we are. I think one of the main things that you could take from that is that my <coughs> first European event was in uh, Twask and that's where Connor actually won his first yeah. European event and debut of uh, European drifting yeah so it was which is cool. kind of where it kind of went full circle to being like I want to do this and then being like I'm actually quite good at it now yeah. <laughs> so pretty crazy you guys spoke about Rain's four tyres are the Dakud and the E36 <laughs> missiles <laughs> how do people look into that yeah, it's a <laughs> Uh, yeah, the rain sports are the job, to be honest. Like, honestly, they're surprisingly, like, better than I would have ever imagined that a road tire could have been. Um, like, on the E36s, they make a huge difference, but I also use them at LZ Fest. Um, it's to a point, like, sure, like, it's... Yeah, for sure, absolutely. They're not, like, going to make your car feel like they're in the dry, but, yeah, if you're battling somebody who's on rain sports and you're on normal road mm. tires in the rain, forget about it, you're not going to be able to catch them. Um... But yeah, when I drove uh, Fahey's car, one of my mechanics at LZ Fest in the rain, mm, I put on two six five rain sports, and like Jack was driving Craig's car, one of our mechanics as well, and I was like gapping like Darren McNamara's PS thirteen up the straight for like six seven mm. car lengths in the rain, and it was it was crazy how actually good they were compared to a normal road tire. So yeah, for sure, on my side, I think they they make a big difference. Yeah, I think yeah, it's only like the the lower powered cars where it makes a difference. Like yeah. I think if you. If you both on a set of rain sports onto the back of the GT86s, yeah, you're me. not going to get the same outcome. Yeah, it wouldn't be the same uh, answer to it, but yeah, we like obviously our drift masters wetter are much better. 100%. Yeah. Know. The few last gulps of air before he closes the door for Connor Shannon, Connor Shannon, the higher qualifier, first place qualifier, will lead them in. Marston gives the word, the lights will go green, and here we are, brother versus brother for top step on the podium. Through the gears I go, Shanahan versus Shanahan, wow, no fisting around, Jack almost makes contact with Connor on the initiation, they're both up with him to the wall, and Jack is all over the side of his brother's GT86 on the curb. Jack once again looks for a side of his brother's car and he bats him across the line. 
So what's it like competing against each other as in a battle? Is it more fun? Is it less fun? Is there more pressure? Less pressure? Uh, um, for me, it's more fun because I don't really care if I win or lose or crash into him or crash he, myself. He says that now. And he's, no. He's the most competitive guy you'll ever meet in your life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I also told it's him. All right, don't, I get also told him don't get tickets. Don't get tickets. I also it's told him right. what to do to beat me in this situation. Ah, so <laughs> the uh, no, we I obviously love winning, but when it's this kind of scenario, when it's in the final, I don't care at all who wins or loses, but as long as it's like a good. Once it's a show. As a, yeah, as long as it's a good show. Yeah, but it is. If, if it was if, a top if, Yeah, if we battle early, like in. <laughs> Like I think twenty twenty two we battled in the top thirty two or top sixteen. Yeah. In Riga, like it's hard to enjoy winning then because it's like whoever loses, you're like we both want to get to the final and we both want to be as high as we can in the championship. But in a situation like this, this was our yeah, first yeah. ever Drift Masters final. It was honestly like dream stuff, what we've dreamt of for a long time. So, um, but yeah, as Jack said, we both don't like losing. At the yeah. you know at the end of the day, we're both brothers. We both have massive respect for each other, and uh, as you know. We said that like we help each other to win you know without this guy my life would be difficult because i don't understand a car as good as him um and you know if we're both having a shit day we can really like push each other up mm -hmm. and i think we have a huge advantage compared to, compared to any other team in drift masters because you know we can relay information to each other if something is difficult or somebody's struggling with something it's easy to to figure it out because we can just mm -hmm. ask each other for advice but but yeah you know behind it all when the helmet goes on we won't want to win as each other and that's you know that's the the joys of competing together we're both competitive people and want the best result possible for each other also but it's, it's fun it's always enjoyable and it's always a good show too which is good yeah is there any other chassis that you both have thought about changing to from the 86 uh for me it would be the supra uh the a80 supra obviously i drove one in russia and won the championship with that car and ever since i've just been kind of like uh Clean about how good the car handled, um, but I think if I could like mate like a GT86 and a Supra together, it'd be like my perfect car. <laughs> <laughs> if a GT86 and a Supra had a baby, you reckon it would be unreal? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, mine would probably be a BMW M2. I don't know why. I've just always been a fan of BMWs. I really like driving BMW practice cars also, and I think they suit my driving style. Quite a lot. Um, the front of my GT86 is relatively a little bit similar now to uh, well, yeah, BMW, BMW, stuff set up, BMW and stuff. steering rack and stuff. So um, that would be one chassis, and probably the new Supra. Not just on a performance point of view, but yeah, it has a cool looking car. Mm. They're incredible, to be honest. What was your take? <laughs> what was your take on James Dean's crash in FD? Uh, it's actually quite a funny story about James crash in FD. So obviously we were there to watch the event. And I think out of all the practice that he'd done, the only lap that we missed was the lap that he tried climbing the fence. But the funny part of the story is that me, Connor, uh, Tomas, Kevin, and Chris were all having a bite to eat. And we heard the cars go past, and there was like a bit of a rev in the handbrake. I like did sound like James' car. No, no, I said it, that's yeah, a Mustang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were like, no, I don't know. And no, I ran up to the fence after. Yeah, after. So then I was like, they must have crashed because obviously like there was like the rev on the handbrake and then there was like just like no noise and we the heard crowd, the heard the crowd. we heard the crowd being like, what the hell? So Connor was like, I'm gonna run up and check and see what happened and I was like, all right. So we stay eating our food. <laughs> Connor comes back from the fence and he's like, oh, Matt Fields after crashing, and I was like, just I did Matt. not see James Carr anywhere. Was I like, was like, just Matt Fields and he's like, yeah, he must have hit the wall or something, you know. And we were like, oh, not too bad. We finished our food. We got to the elevator. To go back up to like and the Dave street, is there. and Dave Egan is there, like, and he's like completely pale, and we're like, what? And he's like, 
that's probably the worst crash I've ever seen in drifting. And we were like, and I was like, who? Matt Field. He's like, no, Matt Field and James. And we were like, no way. So like, Connor thought that just Matt crashed. Well, I just see seen James Matt's car. car. I couldn't see James's car. He couldn't see James's car. Uh, yeah, so Dave, obviously we had no worry yeah, at all. And we know Dave. Like Dave is a good <laughs> man to tell a story. Like, and I was kind of like, ah, I can't be that bad. And Dave was like, no. He's like, I know I hype stuff out, but he was like, this is big. Like, yeah, yeah, he was <laughs> scared yeah. looking. And like, then we, some guy comes running out of the elevator and shows us a video, and we're yeah, like, we're holy like, shit! Like it, it was, <laughs> it was big. But gladly, James was okay, and yeah, uh, yeah we made, went down and spoke to him. He was hurt, but got back in the car. Yeah. We were trying to force him to drive. Yeah. He didn't want to drive. <laughs> and we were like, and we, were like <laughs> we flew a long way. <laughs> so you better get in the car. So yeah, a little bit of a funny story about that question. Would you ever leave drifting for another motorcycle? <sighs> uh, do you want to go first? Um, yes and no. Like I think drifting will always be my backbone like it will always be the sport and that's kind of more to be honest because I think if if you're a person watching this and you're heavily involved in drifting you know what drifting is like because I think drifting is like a huge family like mm -hmm. even the drivers even though we're all competitors we've kind of been in a sport what was never massive like recognized by mainstream media and I think we all try to do our part to like make it as big as we can and, and now have it as our job and all that kind of stuff so I think personally for me I would be too close to drifting to ever like walk away from it fully um would I drive other motorsports? Absolutely. Obviously, I'm not, I know what you're going to say probably. Um, I'm kind of the same. I probably like would like to try a bit of rallying, but would just be kind of like part-time. I don't think I would ever go down the line of being a full-time rally driver or a full-time rally cross driver. But absolutely, I would love to show uh, drifting skills in other motorsports and uh, give something a go. But yeah, drifting will always be will always be the favourite for me, I think. Yeah, I think I'm probably the same. But obviously, I've dabbled into rallying in the last 12 months. And obviously it's only like at a low scale of the end or low end of the scale. <laughs> um, so it's like, uh, obviously if the opportunity came up for me to like do other bigger events and like proper cars and stuff and rallying or any sort of motorsport really, I'd probably do it. Like, because I think that's probably the one thing that people don't understand is that like a, a drift driver could go into most other motorsports and be fairly competitive from the get go. But I think anyone coming from any other motorsport to drifting would probably take them a good a good stint to get to like a, a drift masters level, you could say. But uh, yeah, I would definitely take the opportunity to drive in any type of motorsport and yeah. let it be. We grew up driving. Slow, yeah. we so. grew up driving cars, driving everything what we could get our hands yeah. on. So we're still the same. We just love driving everything out, as fast as we can, basically. So. This is not what. Well, I was in here. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it would have worked if I did. Like, it would have. Sure, like, that's like saying, that's just like saying I would own if I didn't crash into it. No? No. How about that? Wait a Huh? How? Oh. Ah, it's not like. It is. <laughs> do you like meeting your fans? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, all, it's, it's what it's all about. It's, it's basically but it was the fans, there's none there's no us, so it uh it's just part of the job. Um obviously <laughs> now that the fan base is getting a bit bigger, there is the times where like we're doing like half an hour autograph sessions and it's it's not that we're like you know, not wanting to be with you, but it's like it's in between like qualifying and battles and obviously there's like we also need our little bit of time to like try get our heads in the game and like we re reset and refocus for battles and stuff but other than that like when it's not at the event i think it's when i meet prefer meeting fans because yeah for sure it's a uh, it's much easier to like give people your time and actually have a good conversation with someone rather than you know having a queue of people and it's like rushed conversation all the time so yeah yeah, fans are what makes drifting. It's, yeah. it's crazy how big and famous drifting is after getting all of a sudden, it's like it's gone crazy. So yeah, it's amazing for us as well. And of course, we appreciate everybody who supports us, whether it's a, a fan or you're involved by buying uh, stuff from the team or you're traveling to events, you know, using hard earned money to come and watch yeah. us and stuff. It's, it's usually appreciated. And yeah, as Jack said, sometimes we don't get really to show that uh, fully. 
but as I said, hopefully sometime we can start running our own events where we can invite like five, six hundred people and just mm. uh, spend the day with everybody. Um, but yeah, for sure, the fans are what keeps us ticking over and we appreciate yeah. that. Can we expect to see a new Shanahan <coughs> team jersey this year? Yep, yeah, that's the plan for sure. Um, yeah, obviously this off season going back to is like, is the off season where I think the team makes as like much of a transition, of course, getting back filming for you guys. Um, we now have like uh, have stuff available on the website to order. Uh, we have big plans, really, to be honest, like with the media side and the marketing side of the Shanahan's. Like it's kind of what's probably the main focus for the team right now. So, yeah, for sure, there's lots going on. We want to my, try and make as big changes as we can um, in the team. So, for sure, we want to give you guys everything what you can, you want, and you can see and and buy it if if you, if you like it. So, absolutely, there'll be a new team or uh, jersey, and there'll be lots of other stuff going on as well. How does the pre-order with merchandise work? Um, yeah, so obviously to save us from stocking a load of different sizes, um, we have a supplier who we can get all the orders from and at the end of every week we send them our orders and then the following week he does all of the merch basically. So then it gets sent out to us, we package it and send it out. Now obviously over Christmas there's been a couple of delays because of <coughs> the new year and all that kind of stuff. but. Hopefully going forward it'll be a lot faster and be a little bit easier to get stuff to you faster and there will be a point maybe during the year where we do have uh, some yeah. in stock stuff like our jerseys will more than likely be in stock which will always be uh, easy to, uh, to ship out and we have other ideas as well for um, events the, the for, yeah, for the events stuff, so. and also the, the website will probably be updated again with uh, some more stuff that we'll be trying to put our logo on basically and most of that stuff would probably be in stock as well so easier to get to you guys and i think something as well before we finish up because obviously <coughs> right now we're hard working on what's better for you guys you know so if you guys have any like you know ideas what you mm. know we just done this q a because it break up the content a little bit um but if you guys have any idea of stuff what you want us to do or stuff what you maybe want us to try you know let us know because at the end of the day we're filming for your guys entertainment and that's what it's all about for us and also as well if you can get in the comments of this video we've been thinking about doing some stuff where kind of touching on like doing the shanahan's events but possibly maybe even doing a shanahan like vip thing at mm -hmm. events what we compete in and stuff and we we've been working quite hard on it and it takes like a, a lot of effort um and putting a lot of energy into it so we don't want to do it and it, uh, and it not to be successful so if it's something what you guys would be interested in to to have a little bit more access to us to have you know feel like you're involved in a little bit of a clan at an event for sure get in the comments let us know if it's something what you're interested in and it's exciting because we have yeah honestly it, this is like the best position that the team has ever been in driver perspective we want to go back and win everything again obviously but as a marketing point of view we want to have the best looking team in drift yeah. masters and we want to try take it to another level this year and that's the plan right this one has come up a bit will connor be doing formula drift uh, of course you'll ask that question <laughs> Um, I'm sick of hearing this yeah, question. It's been like the most common question. We've been at order sport and literally every second person was asking this question. But yeah, it's something that probably is worth touching on because there hasn't been much explanation about it. Um, to give you guys an idea, the, the idea for me for 2024 was to go to FD for a full championship. Some things changed and it made more sense for me to stay in Drift Masters and try to defend the title. Um, doesn't rule out FD completely. Uh, for me, it was kind of like, does it make sense to go there for three four events uh, show up and just kind of learn a little bit there and go back maybe in 2025 right now it's already early into 2024 but also late into planning stuff already because fd round one comes up quite fast i'm in the middle of some meetings right now uh to try and make some decisions whether it'll be like just turn up for wildcard at, at certain events or or not go there at all so honestly i can't answer that question like 100 percent. of course i would love to go there but you know i think what we have here is ours um and that's obviously our main focus that this is our business now and, and it's going quite good so for me it's kind of just picking the right time and um yeah i think if i was to go for a full championship in fd the dream would be to bring the shanahan's to america and uh, show up and try to do what we do here the same in america would be quite nice eventually but that's obviously further down the line so yeah uh the answer to the question is right now i honestly can't tell you